If you're a sports fan, make sure you go check out Sportscaster for all of your sports needs. Whether you're a football fan, basketball fan, or baseball fan, this app is the perfect way to get news for your team and is an app I personally use myself in case any of you guys want to check out my pregame, halftime, or postgame streams. I'll leave a link in the description below. What is up, Pats Nation? It's Patriots Global back here with another video, and in this one, we're going to be talking about another trade rumor here involving the New England Patriots. And if you're following the recent history of the trade rumors and the Patriots within the past couple of weeks, then you could probably guess that this has to do with the offense, not to do with the defense by any mean, as the New England Patriots are rumored to be looking into tight end Tyler Eifert from the Bengals, but also AJ Green from the Bengals. This has been a pretty big story going around for the past few days, a lot of different media outlets have been talking about this, have been making videos, have been posting articles about this. So it is a very real thing. And the most interesting thing here, though, is that they are saying that the New England Patriots could be trading either for A.J. Green or Tyler Eifert, or they could be trading for A.J. Green and Tyler Eifert. Obviously, if they did both, they'd be adding two very important needs to this offense. Adding both guys would give this offense the spark that it needs, giving some tight end depth that we really do not have, only having two two tight ends in Matt Lacoste and Ryan Izzo. And the fact that we just let go of Ben Watson, the Pats could definitely use a tight end. Now, of course, A.J. Green is a wide receiver, one of the top wide receivers here in the league. He would add pretty much every aspect that the New England Patriots need to their offense, especially when it comes to a wide receiver. With all these rumors circling around about so many different players that the Patriots are looking into to trade for, again, you know, Stephon Diggs, now Tyler Eifert, A.J. Green, Emmanuel Sanders, just to name a few, it is very clear, for lack of better words, that the New England Patriots are looking to make a trade before the trade deadline on October 29th. Now, this is not anything new to us Patriots fans, as the New England Patriots actually tried to do the exact same thing last offseason. They tried to get guys like Demaryius Thomas, Golden Tate, and they failed at every opportunity. Seeing the fact that the New England Patriots are looking into so many guys as our wide receiver group is not that deep and the guys that are on our team and are your top receivers are already banged up, not to mention that the offensive line is performing extremely poor, I definitely see them making some type of transaction here offensively. Now, a CBS sports reporter named Jason La Canfora, I'm hoping I pronounced that right, actually reported on Sunday with multiple citing sources that the New England Patriots are one of the most active teams in the entire NFL in the trade market ahead of the deadline again on October 29th. His report also goes with a larger report about the Bengals, who, let's keep in mind, have not won a single game, okay? They're 0-4, and from what it sounds like, they are looking to rebuild in every way possible and doing a serious rebuild at that. Other general managers within the NFL actually believe that the Bengals are in a certain position to trade away even their best assets because of the serious rebuild that they are going through. The Bengals have not been anything special for years and years. Okay, you have Andy Dalton. He's not anything special. He's had some issues staying healthy. They haven't been to the playoffs. They haven't been knocking on the door to the playoffs in who knows how long. You lost one of your more top-tier players in Vontez Perfect. Now, I don't like Vontez Perfect. He's a super dirty player. But nonetheless, looking at, it from, looking at it from a football standpoint, they did lose more of their top-tier player in him. And if you're going to rebuild, you might as well get rid of A.J. Green, one of the top receivers in the league, who you can get something for, who's also in contract year, and also Tyler Eifert, a guy who is a good tight end in this league, but has issues staying healthy. Now, while this trade would definitely be, be a top-tier trade, one of the best trades that the Patriots have made in a while, especially if they acquire both Eifert and Green, I do have a few concerns, okay? Starting off with A.J. Green, he is getting older. He's one of the older receivers here in the league. He's 31 years old, and the big thing here is the fact that A.J. Green has yet to play 
even a single game, a snap here in the NFL so far this season because he is dealing with an ongoing foot injury that has kept him on the sideline. Like I also mentioned before, AJ Green is in contract year. He's set to be an unrestricted free agent in 2020. So if the New England Patriots do make a trade for him, they're giving up, let's say, draft capital or potential player for a guy that they are going to be renting out for one year before he hits the open market. And in that one year with the Patriots, he'll be making about $11.9 million just right outside the door of $12 million on the year. Something else that I do want to clear up is that when I'm talking about these trades, when I'm talking about roster moves, so many of you guys are commenting in the comments section, you know, Patriots Global, why are you even making videos about this? They have no cap space. They cannot do anything. Nothing's going to happen. You know, if they want to go out and they want to make a trade, they're going to have to cut all their star players. That's not going to happen. Are you stupid? And to that, I have to say, no, the New England Patriots do not have to cut these top tier players by any means. I really have no clue why everybody thinks that in order to make room, you have to cut someone. In fact, a lot of times that can make the situation worse as it could result in dead money. Also, if you think that the New England Patriots are not going to make any transactions, they're not going to try to make their roster better because of the situation that they're in in cap space, you're funny. Okay, the New England Patriots have always done this. They've been swimming and drowning in their debts when it comes to cap, but are always able to really maneuver it if they have to make a trade that they see vital to their season. If New England does want to free up some cap here, all they will have to do if they don't want to release a player would be extending players, okay? Talking about guys like Devin McCourty or guys like Kyle Van Noy. This will bump the cap from this year to ongoing years. And keep in mind, the New England Patriots have a super, super long list of really their most vital players at the end of this season. That being just the two guys I talk about, okay? Kyle Van Noy and Devin McCourty. So even if you can get them signed now, then you're saving your headache for the end of the season. I guess for me, when it comes to AJ Green, more one of the top things when it would come to a possible trade is what would the New England Patriots have to give up? Okay, because you're taking 11.9 mil to take on a guy for just one season who's dealing with already an injury. Okay, so you are easily not talking about a first round pick. Potentially, you're talking about a push for a second round pick. And are the Bengals going to be okay with getting pretty low draft capital for a guy of his caliber? Now, let's say for a second that the New England Patriots do acquire A.J. Green. Now, that would definitely be a help in so many different ways here to this offense. Okay, he sits at six foot four. He visibly is a very, very tall receiver. Now, he is a little bit more on the slimmer side. He isn't really a bulky wide receiver in a someone, let's say, like a Josh Gordon or even a Julian Edelman for that sense. But he's going to bring very vital and necessary height to our offense that the New England Patriots had tried to add the entire offseason, but ultimately lost as the offseason, even the regular season, progressed. He's a sure-handed, strong-handed um, guy who is really good at getting open. Okay, He's really good at getting released from defenders, finding the holes, and just being able to get open. And that's all you have to do to be here in New England. Okay, guys, we do not need someone to come in and have ran, you know, a 4-2, a 4-3 in their 40-yard dash, okay? Would it be great? Yeah. Do we need it? No. Be a good-handed receiver who can find the open pockets in a defense, get open, and you'll get the ball from Tom Brady. The thing about A.J. Green, too, is that, in a sense, he's kind of like a Josh Gordon. He's hard to get down. He's always fighting for more yards. Because he is so strong, he is able to slip out of those tackles, especially if they're not securing a tackle well enough. So there would be a lot of good things that A.J. Green could bring to the New England Patriots offense. But again, a big amount of cap for a guy who, again, hasn't even played a game yet this season because of injury. But it is definitely fun to think about that the New England Patriots are interesting in trading for a seven-time Pro Bowler who in his eight seasons in the NFL with, court, port, with poor quarterback play that the Cincinnati Bengals have, has only had two seasons where he has not eclipsed 1,000 yards. In those two seasons that he didn't eclipse 1,000 yards was in 2016 where he only played 10 games and had 964 yards, and then in 2018 where he played nine games and had 694. 
every other season that he's been in the NFL, he's had over 1,000 yards. Now, moving on to the Tyler Eifert side of things, a guy that I'm sure a lot of people are interested in as he's a tight end. New England Patriots just decided to not keep one of the best tight ends that they'd have currently on the roster in Ben Watson. And tight end has just been a super banged up, terrible position here on the Patriots offense. Just really not going anywhere except for probably Ryan Izzo. Now, Tyler Eifert is also a little bit more up there in age now. He is not as old as A.J. Green is, but he's 29. He's really peaking that 30 area, and once you start to get in that age, you do start to lose a little bit. Now, the good thing about Tyler Eifert is that he would bring the necessary build and the necessary height that the New England Patriots really need in a tight end at this point, and an experienced tight end at that one. He's six foot six, 251 pounds, so in that you're obviously getting a pretty bulky and tall tight end. Not to mention that he has undeniable talent, just has issues staying on the field. If the New England Patriots did make a trade for him, he would easily become the number one tight end and would hands down be the most talented. Now, Tyler Eifert has been a guy that has been related back to the Patriots in previous years, the past couple seasons, so I'm really not surprised to hear the fact that they are interested in trading for him. It would definitely be a very good fit. His talent, the need for the position here on the New England Patriots, and again, him coming to a team where he has Tom Brady, he has a really good quarterback play, a team that loves to utilize their tight ends with a quarterback who loves to throw to his tight ends, and having the best coaching staff again in the Patriots and Bill Belichick. I personally do believe that all his talent has not been utilized to the fullest as the Bengals coaching staff really is not that great. Again, it's just the Bengals, not to really knock on the Bengals for any Bengals fans watching this, but you cannot compare the coaching staff from the Bengals to the Patriots and how they bring the best out of their players. Looking at what the New England Patriots might have to give up for Tyler Eifert, to me, is not anywhere compared to what they would have to give up for someone like A.J. Green. Sad part here is that Tyler Eifert is also in contract year, meaning that if the New England Patriots trade with him, well, they'll have one season with him before, of course, he hits the free agency market, becoming an unrestricted free agent at the end of this season. Now, unlike A.J. Green... Unlike really any of the other trade candidates that we've talked about on this channel surrounding the New England Patriots before this October 29th trade deadline, you know, Stephon Diggs, Emmanuel Sanders, now A.J. Green, his base salary is not anything compared to them. It's really not high at all, especially for somebody of his caliber. For 2019, he's set to make a base salary of just $1 million. Just $1 million New England Patriots could easily fit that in now that could potentially be uh, the only thing that I could see them asking a little bit more for Tyler Eifert than any other one else but really it's just how the Bengals decide to play their cards another thing to watch here with Tyler Eifert is that the New England Patriots are not reportedly the only team looking into him and that the New Orleans Saints are also interested in trading for him Looking at his stats, he is not anywhere compared to A.J. Green. He has never had a season with 1,000 yards. His best season came in 2015 when he had 615 yards on the season. That was also his best season in terms of touchdowns when he had 13. The sad part here is that Tyler Eifert really has never played an entire season since joining the NFL in 2013. So that is going to be the huge downside on this part. That's also what is going to drop his value is the fact that he's never actually able to stay on the field. I mean, we're talking about Gronk being broken glass. You do not know broken glass until you look at Tyler Eifert. I don't know if it's just the conditioning that the Bengals are running here or if it's just that he's such an injury prone guy, but the dude cannot play a season. In 2013, he played 15 games for the season. 2014, he had 1. 2015, he had 13. 2016, he played 8. 2017, he had 2. 2018, 4. And 2019, so far, he's had 5. So he's played the entire season so far this season. Because of the fact that he's not able to stay on the field, he has put up pretty mediocre numbers except for 2015. Now, there was a season he had 
445. That was his rookie season back in 2013. And then his third best season came in 2016 when he had 394 yards. Now, other than that, he's put up pretty unrespectable numbers, especially for someone his caliber. Again, filling in numbers like 37 yards on the season, 46 yards on the season. Last year, he had 179 yards on the season. So far this season, he has 95 yards and one touchdown with a long catch of 18 yards. But again, a lot of this comes because of him being so injury prone. If the New England Patriots are somehow able to to acquire Tyler Eifert, and for some ungod, or I should say godly, for some godly reason, he is able to stay healthy and stay on the field, then the New England Patriots easily will have a top-tier tight end here in the NFL. Really a big reason you're not hearing, hearing more of Tyler Eifert is because he's so unable to play so many games. He's unable to actually play a season, and then keep in mind the fact that He's with the Cincinnati Bengals. Okay, Andy Dalton is throwing him the ball. And the guy running the plays here, the guy calling the plays, is the head coach of the Bengals. So take that as you will. The great thing about Tyler Eifert, though, is that when you look at his gameplay, he's visually a good tight end. He visually has the talent to be described as a top-tier tight end in the league. He's good at run blocking. That's exactly what the New England Patriots need. He'll be able to have impact blocking and keeping Brady safe, which is another thing that we really need. But he is a very strong-handed tight end. He can catch passes here in traffic. He's really good with that. Something that the New England Patriots did a lot with Rob Gronkowski. Now, of course, I'm not trying to compare him to Rob Gronkowski. Just trying to make the the comparison in a way that you can kind of have an idea of what I'm talking about. But nowhere to the caliber of Gronk, obviously. He's a guy that they can easily set up on the outside or in the middle of the field. He, okay, he isn't a guy who's going to burn you with his speed, but neither was Gronk. The thing that made them so great is that they're, they had such great height. Again, at six foot six, he'll be able to bring these balls down, has big hands, has a big frame, and again, just a very strong body. But that is going to be it for this one. If the New England Patriots do trade for both of them, I would see more of a package deal coming on. Um, in that case, if you're talking for both of them, then you might be talking about a first-round pick into the game. Even then, though, I think that that is a pretty big push. Um, personally, I would be talking about a second and maybe a later draft pick, possibly even a player. What are your guys' thoughts on this trade scenario? Okay, you know the New England Patriots have been interested in a lot of different guys. Now we're hearing that they're interested in trading two players from the Bengals. So let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below. A lot of you are already leaving me your thoughts, both in my DMs and in my comment section. So keep those rolling, guys. I love hearing your thoughts. Make sure you guys share this video with everybody you know so we can go to the Patriots Global family. Other than that, I will catch you guys in another video.